Hey guys, and welcome back to Silent Hill. We've just finished our exploration of Midwich. I was going to say university then, but uh, definitely not a university um, of the school. And that was an interesting time. However, as soon as we finished uh, the first boss and everything returned to normal, we have uh, once again stepped out onto the streets of Silent Hill with nothing but the church bells ringing out just in the distance. So, let's go and see what's going on, shall we? So we've got a groaner there, which we're not going to worry too much about. Now, interesting, that gate was actually locked when we tried to get up here before. However, it's now mysteriously unlocked. And on top of that, this door, we now have the key for, the Gordon key. So with that, let's take a step inside and pilfer the place. Handgun bullets are plenty, because of course there is. Now, I have been experimenting with the uh, widescreen hack off camera. However, it's... Uh, unstable, shall we say, <laughs> putting it politely. Um, it does look cool filling the screen out with the correct aspect ratio and everything. However, it does also lead to some glitches around the side of the screen. And I've noticed that uh, Harry's flashlight in certain scenes as well is floating um, either to the left or the right of his body. It just doesn't look quite right. For me, anyway. Now, there's also some annoying sections that we are going to have to turn off some of the enhanced features of this game. Because it causes the game to crash. Which, uh, not going to lie to you guys, <laughs> I actually thought I'd come up against like a game-breaking issue with this emulator. And I was thinking I might have to scrap this run and start again. Luckily after some digging it's a common problem and we have a solution anyway let's continue exploring silent hill let's get rid of this guy bloody air flutters stick my boot up his ass and continue exploring now there's a couple of nice little items that we're going to come into contact with in fact, I believe, yep, there's one there. We'll have it. I actually th thought there was another one back here as well, but no, sadly not. Anyway, oh, hello, another air flutter. Let's get rid of him. Now, an interesting thing with these air flutters as well, if you actually do some serious damage to them, they can sometimes just decide to fuck off into the distance. Uh, I don't know if they go and heal, but they will leave you hanging. Now, if you come over here, the bridge is out. Or the road is out, I should say. Now, also, I've never been to America, but I'm starting to think that these roads are probably a little bit wider than the average American road. Now, I don't know, but I'd be interesting to know if that's the case. Because these roads are pretty bloody uh, wide. You could fit a jumbo jet through there. Now, we've got some bullets over here on the side. And, of course... There's another fluttery bastard hiding just up here somewhere, eating the trash. Well, trash pandas are certainly a different breed in Silent Hill. He's dead. <laughs> Flumped to the floor like a massive big old sack of shit. Anyway. What's curious, if we go down this way, there is a groaner, but we're not going to worry. Is that what they're called? Yeah, groaner. But we're not going to worry about him. Now, there's also the chainsaw. 
Yes, there's no gasoline. I can't use it. So on your first playthrough, you cannot um, find gasoline for the chainsaw. However, that's going to change. There's actually two weapons in this game that you need to fill with fuel before you can actually use them, but you can only pick one of them. Now, the magic of this is once we actually uh, pick up one in one playthrough and refuel it, that will always have fuel in it. So you can fuel up the second weapon in... Ah, uh, he's going. He's running off. Kind of want to hunt him down. Otherwise, it just feels like a waste of bullets, you know? I swear these guys, like, almost fly off to despawn. All right, whatever. So, yeah, we can either have the chainsaw or the rock drill. And then uh, once you've unlocked one and fueled it up, in a following playthrough, you can find the chainsaw where it always is, for instance. And if you filled it up in a previous playthrough, it will always have um, fuel. So you can then pick up the fuel can and use it in a um, further on playthrough. Which is cool. I like it. I like the way it gives you a choice. Now, I don't think, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've ever tried the flamethrower, uh, the flamethrower, the chainsaw or the rock drill. So, I'm kind of looking forward to trying both of those. Come on. For some reason we couldn't kick him, not really sure why. Anyway, this is the gas station, and this is where we would find the fuel, the fuel can. However, unfortunately, it's not here. But what we do get is a save point and uh, ammunition, which is nice. Now, I might... I was going to say I might save it there, drop a save state. But to be honest with you, I think we're going to be fine. Anyway, if we keep following this route down, we can find some sneaky supplies hidden. We just dispatched this groaner. Come on, boy. There we go. Got the cure for ails you, my friend. I've come down here. We should get some handgun bullets and some more shotgun shells. Lovely. Wonder bar. Right, let's get out of here. And let's finally make our way to the church. However, like I said, before we go into the church, I have to make some gameplay changes. Otherwise, it will crash as soon as we um, start the cutscene. Which is kind of annoying, but, you know, it is what it is. So, the problem will be if we're playing Duck Station. And you probably can't see this because my overlay will be blocking it. If we click... Um, our graphics options, we actually have to turn off um, G, uh, no, PGXP, Precision Geometry Transformation Pipeline. And it's the bit that actually you know, stops all of the wobbling and uh, deforming of uh, the actual pixels and geometry in the game. Now, it looks like it's actually already disabled here, which... I thought the game looked a little bit wobbly, but we'll see. Uh, I'm almost tempted, to be honest with you, to leave this off just for this game. And mainly because you have to do this two to three times in uh, the playthrough of this game because it will cause crashes. Also, if we use the widescreen hack, there's also a couple of other areas in this game that I've noticed uh, it will crash so they're cool, they're nice to have however they're a little bit too unstable for my liking in this particular game anyway so with that out of the way let's get back resume game, and I'm going to drop a save state because I don't exactly trust it, and we're going to head on through the door to the church Now, this cutscene plays fine, 
but it's the talky bit afterwards. Were you ringing that bell? I've been expecting you. It was foretold by Gyromancy. Gyromancy. I knew you'd come. You want the girl, right? The girl? You're talking about Cheryl. I see everything. You know something. Tell me. Stay back. Nothing is to be gained from floundering about at random. You must follow the path. The path of the hermit concealed by Flauros. Flauros? What? What? What are you talking about? Here, the Flauros, a cage of peace. It can break through the walls of darkness and counteract the wrath of the underworld. These will help you. Make haste to the hospital before it's too late. Wait, don't go yet. The hospital, huh. Well, the hospital was actually in another part of town, so that's awkward. Anyway, there's the Flauros. I guess we're going to take it. Cage of Peace? Well, I don't exactly know what that lady's gibbering on about, but I guess if she wants to help us out with these items, who are we to deny? Anyway, with the bridge key in tow, uh, and you know what, safe state. Let's go. I mean, the texture warping is, you can definitely see it, but it's not extremely bad, I suppose. And uh, yeah, to have to keep exiting the game and disabling that at certain sections, yeah, it's just annoying because it's one of those features that you can just turn off and re-enable whilst the emulator is playing. You actually have to completely close the game restart the emulator and get back in otherwise it doesn't take effect in fact the options grayed out but whatever so little tip bit if anybody else is trying to play this on duck station now if we go down here oh god actually you can really see the texture warping there we can get a first aid kit and we can get some nice shotgun shells you know, maybe I will turn it back on since it, it's actually bothering me more than I thought it would but whatever maybe we will maybe we won't anyway if we come down into here, this is where the rock drill is. For some reason, I can't interact with it. I don't know why. Maybe it's because our flashlight is turned off, perhaps. There we go. There we go. There is a rock drill. There is no gasoline. Can't use it. Oh, but we will, James. Oh, but we will. I keep wanting to call him James, actually. He's, of course, Harry. Yeah, so when we have this flashlight on in the widescreen hack, it isn't actually attached to Harry's jacket there. It's kind of hovering around him, and it just looks screwy. And there's a few other minor, minor graphical differences. Now, also, if you're in the widescreen hack here, if we come through into this cabin the bridge control room grab the map of course I guess we'll drop a save state because we are here in a save room if you pick this health drink up the game will instantly crash and at least in my experience if we step up to these controls here the game will also crash there's a keyhole on the control panel gee James I wonder if it's this key that's in our pocket here. The machinery is running. Do you want to press a switch? Aye. Yes, I do. So we've picked up everything from there. We have picked up that. 
and we are good to go into central Silent Hill. Let's go. Now I don't know if that's the machinery running that's making that sound or if it's just that wonderful Silent Hill industrial music. We may never know. Anyway, our first portal call is going to be the police station. Seems reasonable. Now we should have the map for this area that we've just acquired. Yep. So, what we want to do is get through here. And we want to check the other end of the bridge because there are some goodies. And we like goodies. We've got some health drinks. Uh, I don't think we can actually access this door. In fact, can't actually even search it. So, go figure. All right. Cool. Now, if we come back over this side, we can go down to another broken bridge area and find some more handgun rounds. Which, to be honest with you, we must be getting to the point now where our pockets are well and truly stuffed. So we have 34 shotgun shells. We have 200 handgun rounds. I get the feeling like 200 seems to be a cap. I don't know, though. I'm not sure if you actually can cap that out. Anyway. Let's get rid of this flutter. Where you going, boy? Ooh. Ooh, I heard him thud. Now, there's a new enemy in this area. It is called the Romper. And it's definitely a step above what we are used to. There it is. It looks like a giant monkey-type thing. Now, it's not that tough, as you just seen, but... He's quick, and he will do hellish amounts of damage to you. This is the first of the more advanced enemies that we're going to be coming in contact with. Anyway, so here's the police station. We can't go in through that door because it is locked. And we don't like locked doors. There's another romper there. Let's just head inside for now. So... We have some goodies in here. We have a nice box of shotgun shells, which we're going to be stuffing into our pockets. We have two packs of handgun bullets, which we are also going to be stuck. Yeah, look, we're back up to 200 again. I get a feeling this game has like a cap of 200 bullets because each one of those packs is supposed to be 15. Let's check it out, shall we? So we're missing eight. So if we pick up this pack of bullets, yeah, it takes us back up to 200. So there is, I never realized there was an ammo limit in this game. How curious. So it makes me wonder in that case. So 215 rounds is the most we can carry. Huh. Alright, well, I mean, whatever, I guess. Okay. So, we have some more shells. And we have a little scrap of paper down here. There's a memo on the desk. Uh, Coroner Sills Call. Hmm. Curious. Officer Gucci is unlikely to be murdered. He apparently died naturally. But medical records show Officer Gucci had no prior symptoms of heart disease. Hmm. Interesting. So one of the officers is down. And I guess there's somewhat mysterious circumstances around his death. Officer Gucci as well. So, before we go to the hospital... Now, those rompers can actually outrun you, so they are certainly more dangerous than anything else we've come into contact with so far. Now, 
We're not going to worry about the Groner. We are going to want to head straight down here because there's some more goodies to pick up. Looks like that Groner is not taking any nonsense from us. There we go. He's gone. There should be another Groner down here. And I guess because we're actually maxed out on our handgun ammo, I suppose we may as well just finish these guys off. Down here, there is some more enemies. Should be at least, I think, a couple of rompers here somewhere. There he is. Try and get his attention. There we go. Step on his spine for good measure, and we can tell that there's still another one. There he is. You know what? Let's kill him. Yeah, those guys, they really don't screw around. Now, anyway, if we head down this alleyway. Which has some more fluttery bastards. Ooh! Sneaky git. Let's drop his ass. He's done. There should be some goodies. Interesting. Last time I came down here, he was actually... Um in front of me. He didn't appear from behind. But yes, that's right. There should be two of them. Anywho, let's head over to the hospital. Seems like the best place to be right now. Because apparently, that's where all the cool kids hang out. And there we have it. Unfortunately, for us, it is a target-rich environment. Nothing that our trusty little handgun can't sort out. Okay. I don't think there's any supplies out here. No. I don't think we can go in this door. No. Cool. Right, let's head inside the hospital. And begin our search. What are we looking for? Well, I don't know. But apparently we're looking for something. And it looks like the map of the hospital is behind the information desk. But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it here for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, till next time.